Welcome back, everybody, to the Silver Story Author. Today, we have something that isn't a horror story, but, you know, if you look at my, uh, <clears throat> how often I upload, that is definitely horrifying in itself. But, today, we have the return, the reckoning, you could say, of, well, what do I even call this? Oh, right, of course, I'm forgetting the name. Stoner Sundays! We are back with it. Before we get any further, if you are under 18, please click off this video, because the humor I'm going to be going into next is definitely more enjoyable to the adult crowd. Um, because we are going to be talking about that, uh, thing, yes, that people do when they, uh, thrust pelvises or pelvises into faces into each other. You know, I don't discriminate. So today, I've been thinking, and people might go into this and they're like, oh god, here we go. He's thinking. It's a rare occurrence. But I've been thinking a lot about OnlyFans, and it's like, why? You know, why is it getting so big? And, no, 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 this is not me saying OnlyFans is bad. I mean, I've been thinking how fucking boring it is. And what I mean by that, hear me out, what I mean, you know, you have all these people selling nudes, right? Selling porn videos, and it's like, damn, you know, at least, like, make it interesting. You know, I'm not seeing, I'm not gonna pay 5 to $10 to, you know, watch you get glazed like the best donuts in town. No, 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 no. If I want to pay 5 to $10, you can at least put in the level of acting they do in big-budget pornos. I mean, come on. It's not that hard. Those people are not fucking, you know, Oscar winners. You can put that much acting in. You know, or at least come up with, like, like some funny skits that, you know, go into it, have a guy looking like he's gonna give a girl a facial and just whips out two cans of Silly String and sprays her in the face. Imagine the fucking twists you could do with that, right? Look at hentai. It's fucking weird, but it has some great fucking stories. At least put in some effort like have a, uh, a fucking pizza thing where instead of like him opening the box and it's just his dick in the center of the pizza just have it be a pizza with a fucking bratwurst sticking out of it and you'll have the girl faint and go oh no one out pizzas the hut you go in thinking you're gonna stroke your sausage and you end up wanting to order an extra large sausage from pizza hut you know it works out that's marketing for you folks thinking about that recently it's like why you know if i ever make an only fans what i'm going to do I, mean, I need someone to sew the costume, so I'm not sure how this would work. I'm going to create the Dicks of History, trademark pending. And it's going to be literal dicks. You know, just my fucking dick up in, like, Donald Dump. It's not that hard. Put a little blonde hair on top. Maybe give him a little nice little suit with a big beer belly. You know, it works out. Uh, and I don't really have to do much if I want to do the Eye of Sauron. Maybe, like, a paper cutout on the tip. Who knows? That would be so funny. And imagine me being Jewish, dressing my dick up as Hitler. How fucking sacrilegious would that be? A little Charlie Chaplin and I... Only I'm gonna leave out the swastika, because that's just, uh, that's not kosher. This is, we're gonna workshop this. And no Jews were hurt in the taking of the Hitler pics. But anyway, uh, speaking of Hitler... Oh god, what a fucking segue, speaking of Hitler. Yeah, do not take that out of context. You know, I always wonder if his, like, if, you know, he's in hell, and, you know, if it's personal personalized, right? I imagine his hell is not at all like little Nicky from Adam Sandler. No, no, no. His punishment for the rest of eternity, he has to watch all of Adam Sandler's entire discography over and over again. But here's the kicker. He has to watch eight crazy nights, eight times in a row at the end of each cycle. It's gonna drive him fucking crazy. I mean, I'm a Jewish person, and I hate most Adam Sandler films, so meh. And I can't imagine how it'd be for someone who hates Jews. That would just be, like, the worst punishment, ever, honestly. But, uh, yeah, so, speaking of, uh, Jewish things, um, you know, I remember when I worked in kitchens, and shit was wild. In kitchens, level of humor is always insanely dark. I would make Jew jokes all the time, because I'm Jewish, so I have the past. Um, we had this manager, and I didn't realize that she was blonde, and, like, I mean that in the stereotypical sense, like, maybe one brain cell. And, you know, me, making Jew jokes all the time. I don't know how. She's never heard any of my jokes, apparently. One day, she's standing on the other side of me. I'm in the kitchen. She's on, the, like, the server side. For those who uh, never worked in kitchens, that's where they pick up the food and bring it to you. She's points up, and keep in mind, arm straight, all five fingers pointing up, and she goes, I can only reach this high. Because she's talking about how she can't get something down. Now, my uh, the sous chef, no, my manager, sees her do this. And he sees a smirk come across my face. And you ever have a moment, most of the time you're really stupid, but then you just have this amazing idea. And, you know, everything moves in slow motion. So my manager starts running at me like, no, really not wanting me to go there. So I crack a smile 
And I look at the front of the house manager and I go, Jesus Christ, Lauren, I'm going to do it, but you don't got to do that to me. She did it unintentionally. This is the only reason this is funny for all, any of you people you know, who are extremely PC out there. And she's like, oh, oh God, I'm so sorry. My manager looks at me and he goes, why the fuck are you like this? That's the straightest face I can get. I turn and I look at him and I go, you know, people with big ma noses make great firewood, and I walked away. And it was just like a cell in DBZ Abridge. Yeah, after Goku said, you're gonna fucking die. He's just like that. He's like, what? I have so many questions! Uh, speaking of things that are, uh, you don't expect, a lot of people have really weird virginity lust stories, right? Or it's really awkward, and let me tell you, my virginity lust story is one of the funniest things on the planet, if you would believe it. And it's not because, you know, how awkward it was. No, 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 no. My virginity lust story, I lost my virginity to a blind black chick. And it's a crazy story, because you have 15, being horny as fuck, right? You know, you'd probably, uh fuck the dirt if it looked hot enough at that point in your life. How this happened is my mother is blind, and when I was 15, she uh, got invited to an attend a blind convention. Yes, I know. How do they even find the convention space? In any case, you know, 15, horny as hell, and she sits me down and goes, you know, I want to take you with me to the convention to get volunteer experience, but I need you to behave yourself. And I'm like, oh, me? Misbehave? Never. Okay, I was 15, obviously. And she goes, seeing guys are a hot commodity to blind chicks. Blind chicks want to sleep with seeing guys. And I'm just like, in the head. I'm like, yes, 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 yes. Woo! Getting all hyped and ridiculous about it. And uh, my, uh, my mother, um, you know, of course, I don't let her know that. I go, yes, mother, I'll behave. You know, you gotta make it seem like you're going to behave, even though they, they know damn well that you're not going to behave. Um, and so we get to the airport to go to the convention, and it's in Orlando, Florida because, you know, why the fuck not? Uh, yeah, we get there, and I see this, uh, this girl, tall, black chick. That's how I found out that I am a sucker for either Jamaican or, um, heavy African accents. Because, oh, lord! She had a very nice, like, mix of a Jamaican and a Kenyan accent, and I just loved hearing her talk. And she's going to the convention. As her and I start chatting. When we arrive at the convention, we keep chatting for a bit, and then, I think it was the second day, um, I end up going to her room, and how they had it work at those conventions for the um, people that got invited who were like 18 or whatnot, they'd pair them with someone else around their age who was also a blind person. But she was lucky enough to get put in a hotel room with someone she actually knew. So, you know, I'm hanging out in her room, we're just chatting and whatnot. Her friend goes to the bathroom, I look at her, she looks at the wall. Of course, I don't know if this was because she was blind. But I got the biggest balls on the planet that day. And I looked at her. I told her about what my mom said. And I was like, do you think it's true? And she looked at me and said, I never heard of that. And I was like, damn. But, you know, I'd be bound to do that with you. My brothers, we went searching for gold. And we struck fucking diamonds. Then, you know, later that night, I had orchestrated. it. So when my mom went out to dinner, I would invite the girl in. And we'd do the thing. So let me tell you, I became an expert at finding the hole. Because I found out she's a virgin as well. I had to figure out how to find the hole and do everything myself. So I became a quick learner when it came to that shit. The weirdest thing is, you know, a lot of parents, you know, walk in a room after you, you do it and they're like, oh, like, they know, right? And my mom apparently wasn't just blind. I don't know, her nose must have been clogged or something. Because I didn't figure out to last year that she didn't even know I had sex with her. And it wasn't just that one night. No, 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 no. I went through a 12-pack of condoms in, like, five days. So it's like, Mom, how? How did you not know? Like, we were sharing this room. Like, what? I don't know. Maybe it was just the muggy Florida humidity and it you know, helped me out. Thanks, Florida. Something you never usually say as an American. Oh, speaking of uh, crazy things and a Halloween thing. When I was 19, I inherited some money and I, like any sensible weeb, decided, yes, I would go to Japan. Well, to be fair, it wasn't just anime. I have always been obsessed with Japanese culture. I was like, hell yes, I'm going to Japan because I might not even get the chance again. Sweet Christ, I swear English is my first language. During our time in Japan, me and the guy I traveled with, there was a, uh, we went to a small bar. Yeah, this was literally like, probably like 10 seats, like a bar at the at a corner place in uh, Tokyo. We ended up having a ex-Yakuza guy buy us drinks, and this dude was funny as hell. For those who don't know about the Yakuza, you have to be pretty high up in their ranks to be able to leave, you know, without any, like, repercussions. And this dude was, like, a DJ in California at, like, all the nightclubs. Like, just imagine that. 
Like, trying to fuck with the DJ and find out he's an ex-gangster, like, bro, that would be the craziest shit. You think you're gonna, like, crazy shit. And, um, we, you know, he asked us why we were there this time of year. I said because we thought Halloween was a bigger thing than it was. And this man just goes, oh yeah, I love Halloween. My Halloweeny tiny dick. And that's the type of thing, you know, he's an ex-Yakuza, so you don't know if you should be in the wrong for laughing, especially because he was buying us drinks, so we're just like, oh no, like, uh, I don't know if we can laugh at that, it was, it was great though, that man was, uh, I wish I remembered his name, he was a fucking riot, you always get like the, either like the best or the worst out of people when you're drinking, that was, that was some fun stuff, craziest thing. Yeah, especially about drinking. Yeah, I didn't do it a lot after I turned 21, but I did a lot before I turned 21, because guess what? Anime conventions are an alcoholic's wet dream. I never got blackout, and i kind of glad I never did, but I wish I did sometimes. And there was one time that I was staying at a in a room with these guys at a, you know, this convention. It's fucking sweat central. Uh, one of them gets really drunk in the middle of the night, ends up stormtroopering the fucking walls. And what I mean by that is he managed to piss everywhere except the toilet. I swear, I would have been impressed if I didn't wake up and step in it. I would have been like, damn, you're like the Picasso of piss paintings. And he's in bed, so I grab a towel, and I walk up to him, and I kneel next to the bed, and I go, hey, buddy. And he's like, uh, do you know what happened last night? Uh -uh. Well, you're about to find out. And I hand him the towel, and he's like, uh Oh, good lord, it's everywhere. It's an accurate description of that. Like, Jesus Christ on a crutch. Well, now that it has been however long into the video, um, not good at time, apparently. I'm going to end it here. But please make sure that you, uh, you tune in on Thursday for Therapeutic Thursday. And, um, make sure to tune in next week for Spooky Saturday and my next Stoner Sunday. And if you don't get Stoner Sunday on Sunday, you'll get Stoner Monday, because, you know, it's not a stone situation if you're not a little bit late to uploading. Make sure that you comment, like, subscribe, any support you can show me on this channel means quite a bit, so I can keep making these absolutely absurd videos, and I can keep sharing my stories with you. None of this one was written out, actually. I tried to do a little improv on it. So if you didn't like that, please let me know. Make sure you follow the Instagram when I'm going to start posting updates on there later this month. Make sure that you follow the Discord if you are 18 or over. Hopefully you are if you stuck this long in the video. I hope you all liked the video, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.